Wilson here today from RE Technology. Thanks to all of you for coming to our coffee chat. I've got I've got a water chat going on today. Um, and wanted to say hello to some of our regulars. I see that Dennis just said hello. Tim is here. Mary is here. And hi, Trisha from MLS or from, oh, I almost called you MLS a lot. Whoops. 1P MLS. Um, let's see who else. We have lots of Dennis. Oh boy, lots of you guys today. Jerry, Kim. Mary, Peter, Philip, Tim, all kinds of fun people. So they're, they all want to hear what you have to tell us today, Jim. So no pressure. <laughs> no, I never feel pressure. And uh, Howell is here. To, he said afternoon to you, Jim. And Gary Connolly says hello to me. Hi, Gary. Nice to see you here. So hello. anyway, um, you know, I think some of you that are on the call have been with us before, but we do these daily coffee chats. And the whole idea is to help agents and brokers, you know, look at and figure out the best ways to tap into resources, some of which they already pay for, like the MLS, some of which are things they buy through their, or get through their brokerage, and some of them are things that they buy on their own. So today, um, like we've done several times, I wanted to bring on one, one of my absolute favorite MLS executives, and one of my favorite MLSs, who does some really, really, really interesting things for their members, to give you some ideas again. And I remember that some of you may belong to one key, and if you do, you're really lucky. Um, but if you don't, a lot of the things that they're gonna talk about today, you may have in your own MLS as well. So um, go and check them out. Go go into their products and services page, and, or go to their dashboard, or go to their links of all the new products, and see the stuff that's available, because I guarantee you, there's things in there that you didn't know that you could take advantage of that won't cost you one extra dollar, right? So anyway, Jim, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, really fun to have you here today. My pleasure. And uh, we just wanted to remind everybody, um, feel free to ask us questions. Uh, jump in wherever you can. Uh, go to that little blue bar, and then next to the word questions, there's a little triangle. Just click on that triangle, open it up, and then you can type in a question or a comment, and <laughs> I'm happy to ask Jim to, um, to expound upon whatever he's talking about. All right, so as I mentioned, Jim is the CEO of OneKey MLS. He's been CEO now for about a year and a half, I think you said, right, Jim? Yeah. And had been, but you'd been with the, your predecessor, MLS LI, I think, for lots longer than that, right? Uh, about 87 years, I believe it was. <laughs> I'd have to check that new hire date, but right in that area. <laughs> Something like that. I, know, I think it was 1874 when we all started in this business. Exactly. <laughs> All kidding aside, this is something really funny I learned the other day. There are seven generations of realtors in my family. Isn't that crazy? I didn't even know realtors existed that long ago. Wow. From, from Ireland, from way, way, way back, seven generations. So I guess I was destined to be in this crazy business. Anyway, um, so let's just jump in. So, you know, One Key yeah. is a brand new brand. Some of you in New York may still not even know that's the name of your MLS right now, right? Because it happened. But this, these guys have an incredible story, not just as an MLS, but as a business in general. They went live with their new business on March 24th. Okay, so we all know what was going on on March 24th. And remember, one key's in New York. So not only was it the beginning and the, you know, the pandemic was getting really bad, it was in New York where it was horrible, worse than anywhere else in the entire country. So tell us about that. What was that like? And how did you decide to go live right mm -hmm. at that time? And how did it all work out? That's crazy. Well, let me let me start off if I if I can, and then I'll get to that craziness right there about okay. how we about how we even came about and and who we are. Yeah. If that's okay. Okay. Um, for those that don't know, so One Key MLS is the new regional MLS in New York, formed by merging the multiple listing service of Long Island and the Hudson Gateway multiple listing service. And uh, the, the, the original conversations go back to February 2017. We were attending a NISAR meeting, and Matt Cohen of Clarity was given a presentation on merges, data sharing, et cetera, et cetera. And I was not too far away from Richard Haggerty, who is the CEO of Hudson Gateway Association of Realtors and the MLS. And uh, we approached each other, and Richard said, you know what? Do you want to have a discussion about the possibility of us merging? And uh, I said, hmm, that's an interesting concept uh, because we really didn't have many members who belonged to both. 
we had maybe a thousand, but we decided to get together, talk about it, and decide if we're absolutely out of our minds or if it's something that we should go forward with. Because um, there, there always has been a vision amongst some people in New York that if you are within a commuter train ride of Manhattan, you should all be in the same market for the sake of the realtors and for the sake of the consumers. You can go to one place, you can find out everything. I mean, you can go to one key now, I believe is, is what that point is. Uh, so we decided to move forward on it. And the one of the main obstacles we had, believe it or not, is that Long Island had roughly 75 members of the board of directors. Long uh, Hudson Gateway had 30 some. So we had to convince everybody that it was going to be good. There would only be 13 people on the board of managers for this. And we were lucky that we had a group of very forward thinking directors. So uh, we took off and ran with it. And here we are to the moment of March 24 in the middle of the pandemic and deciding to launch at that time. Um, and we did hear things like, are you crazy? What are you thinking of by even moving ahead with this? And, and obviously we had so many different meetings with our board of managers, the staff to get the opinions on it. And every time we ever discussed it, there was never a good reason not to move forward. There yeah. really wasn't because what were we waiting for? Um, I, I have no idea what we would be waiting for. So, so it was such an obvious decision to move forward with it. And it, in one way, it worked well because it was almost like a soft launch because we, the, yeah. market, the market had been shut down just two days before that real estate was deemed non-essential so they couldn't do in-person showings or anything so it truly was a soft launch so for that it only made sense to do that and uh and in hindsight it was the perfect move well there's a couple of things that i think that the audience can take away from what you just said number one is that um some markets, and some of you may be in those kinds of markets, there's been discussion by agents or brokers about, geez, why do we have to pay two sets of dues? Or why is the data not at all in one place? Or, you know, there's a, sometimes in some markets, there's a lot of frustration about not doing what you guys decided to do, right? And so just remember from this story, this is New York, right? This is not an easy market, <laughs> right? <coughs> That's if, true. If, Right. If you're in a market where you really believe that this is the right thing to do, um, each and every one of you have an opportunity and a voice to go to your MLS or to go to your association or to go to friends that you have in the other MLS that you'd like to join together and and start talking about it. There's these kinds of things start with one person. That's a great example. Right. Um, you were just yeah. happened to be at a meeting. Someone mentioned it to you and away we went. Right. right. Um, so you guys definitely think about that. The other thing is the idea that you put 44,000 subscribers all in one place and the listings and the exposure of 44,000 people, not to mention nationwide, which we'll look at in a little while with your amazing website. Um, that's, that's a really good thing to do. And so if you've had, and the, to the other side, if you've had mergers in your market, remember to take credit for that because if you used to have, I'm making up numbers, doesn't matter, you know, 6,000 members, and now there's 22,000 members, or even even from 1,000 to 2,000 members, remember in your listing presentations to take credit for the fact you just doubled the amount of people that can potentially sell that property, right? We, we forget about that sometimes. It's it's very, very powerful. And I love what you were saying about it being a, sort of a soft launch, that, um, and it gave you a potential. Now when there was all these new tools that had to be talked about and figured out and virtual selling and all this stuff, you had a much bigger audience to be able to tell that to, right, Jim? Absolutely. So there was, um, unfortunately for the for the realtors, they had they had a lot of spare time on their hands, so they they were embracing everything that we were putting forward. They were getting much more engaged, um, right. and and we we had we had a lot of engagement even leading up to that. Mm -hmm. Once once we had decided on the merger, 
we created a micro site, which the idea we of course stole from other regionals when they did it. And mm -hmm. it, it was really the uh, a central source of information. So on that micro site, we put down, we had interviews with the board of managers so they could see what the vision is. Whenever mm -hmm. we made a decision, we posted it there. People that registered got an alert. So we had picked up a lot of engagement right there. So we just carried that communication forward on to once we were really getting our corporate site in place and where we would have everything. And it, it, it also gave us the ability to, through that, to have the, the launch. There was a lot of excitement when we came up with the name. You know, mm -hmm. I think we went by Nuco for a while, new company, <laughs> and, and 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 our our micro site was called uh, uh, newmlsinfo.com. So we finally got a name, and since we had all of that following, the launch was even more successful. The launch of the name, it got mm -hmm. the excitement going again. We did a big launch at our uh, the big tech fair that we have which I believe, Marilyn, a number of years ago, you came to and spoke at it. I did. It was fun. So, yep. So we had a launch there. We had a, 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 a video launch for all 40,000 members. So we just carried through that engagement that we already picked up moving forward to when we were going live. That's awesome. These are good lessons for anybody that's starting a business too, not just for MLSs. Just give us a quick overview of what's going on in the in the New York market. I, you know, everybody around the country. By the way, um, if, can you in the questions let us know if you're from New York? Because I'd love to know how many of uh, locals are on the call today. But what's going on in the market now? Um, just give us a quick overview. Is it picking up now? Is it opening up? Where are you guys? Uh, the the real estate market. We were on both Long Island and in the Hudson Valley. We were what they called in the state of New York phase two, because they actually okay. opened it county by county, depending on where you were and and the severity of the the virus at that point. Were you were you winding down? What was the case? So the market just opened up for showings uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, yesterday morning. So, okay. so there's a there's there's a lot of action out there right now. But it, 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 it unfortunate for everything in January and February, the the Mar and actually the first few weeks of March, like everywhere else, the market was was moving well, everything was good until it got shut down. And then in March and April, mm -hmm. uh, sales were were roughly forty percent down from a year ago, depending on where you were. Mm -hmm. um, so so the but the market. They just opened the they just opened the doors again yesterday. So oh, good. We'll be moving ahead with that. Well, if some of you might have seen, um, you guys see that one key has Cloud CMA. We heard from Greg Robertson from Cloud CMA a couple of days ago that he's seeing um, CMA reports that are going going way up above last year at this time. So it looks like all that pent up demand is starting to really shoot up. So you might see. A big burst in activity now that you're open again. Well, hopefully that, that's what's going to happen. I, I think what's really going to happen is all it's going to be is a delayed spring market, which the spring yeah. market is always so good. It's just going to be delayed, but I think it's going to be delayed plus, 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 because the, the buyers out in our market area have really been practically beating the doors down, begging the realtors to show them homes in person and they couldn't there were virtual showings and such but uh but yeah the, some sellers were leery about you know not wanting anyone in their house which was the guidelines anyway but oh not the buyers they're out there well dennis who's from your market actually said inventory is so low there's multiple offers all over the place all over asking price so that's yep. a good thing because i read a report this morning from corelogic um that suggests that Pricing may drop slightly, like not a lot, like by one or one and a half points this year. And I'm having a really tough time believing that from all the things that I'm hearing from you guys on this show. Um, but maybe there's certain markets that are going to take a bigger hit. I don't know. But anyway, okay. let's keep going. Yeah. So 
you know, like you say, all of us, you know, we we tried to jump in. Um, you know, everybody in the industry, I think, that had any opportunity to help anybody was trying to, right? I don't know how successful we were, but but tell us, what did you guys do, and you know, what are the kinds of tools that you've provided to your members to help them be successful during this time, but also as you know, now now moving beyond that. Well, the, you know, one, once it once the market got shut down, we're very lucky to have a great leadership team for one key MLS, and their focus was entirely on what can we do to help the members now. We know they're suffering, we're suffering what we can do. So we, we really just did, to begin with, we did some some little things like, of course, we waived all the automatic fines. The last thing they needed to do was to be worried about some nuisance fine for getting something in late when they really had to worry about how they're going to make any money and they can't get into their office. Then we decided to tell all of the realtors that they could leave their their listings as active instead of taking them temporarily off the market because for the most part they were all not active but right. but we really wanted to make it so that all of the buyers would be aware of what is on the market rather than have some removed at that time which then just really leads to that pent up demand the buyers are out there looking at it and so that that was a decision that was made and, and we also decided that the the branded tours and the branded virtual open houses could go in the public remarks which in all in all is they're not allowed to be that's but, great but yeah we were hearing of, of of a lot of agents that the only version they had was a branded one so we didn't want them to have to spend money or go through it so we allowed them to have the branded versions on again get everything out to the public so they can see it so as soon as the market opens all of our agents and brokers are just ready to rock and roll which started yesterday morning so th those were those were the main things that that we did just to make the life easier Mm -hmm. We we then of course did the the virtual open houses once Zillow and Realtor dot com said that they would take them. Mm -hmm. You know they each had a few hiccups along the way to truly make them work well. But mm -hmm. but once they did it, um, the fantastic staff that we have then worked with the vendors to get those implemented and then to get the word out to forty some thousand people that those were available to it. And those, I, I don't know if it was the same in every area, but boy, those took off out in our market area. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the realtors are such smart and creative people. They really are. That, that they looked at that and thought, you know, here's how I can make this work in my market. And some of them did such an amazing job. I really think that that will continue as part of their marketing plan moving forward even once they can do normal open house which they can't now but i think that there's some of these things that that they had to adapt to that they'll continue to use moving forward and i think it'll just be good for everybody yeah i, I do too we've, we've talked about this before but it doesn't it make sense that um you know it, instead of driving someone around to look at 25 houses let them do a virtual open house and look at them all online and then they say okay these are the two i actually want to see <laughs> And it seems like it's going to save everybody so much time and energy and right and as a and as a consumer i'm not going to be able to make it to 10 in one day but i might be able to do it virtually exactly exactly and you know how we we none of us know you know we were talking about this before the show started we, you know we kind of go at least i do day, daily i have different feelings about covid and you know and black lives matter and all the crazy things happening it's like we don't know if we're going to just generally not want to be in public as often in as many places, right? So if I could only go to two houses and not 10 houses, maybe that's going to be a good thing for the long haul. I, I don't know. Maybe we'll get over it. We'll, we just wanted to go everywhere. I, I don't know, but it's quite a lot. Now. <laughs> yeah. It just makes business sense that if I can do it more efficiently and still, I mean, geez, you know, one of the things that I love about what I've seen with virtual open houses is that, 
you know, when you're in a listening presentation, you can't really show someone what a good salesperson you are because you're in a listing presentation, right? But if you can show them a virtual open house that you did in advance, you can show them what a phenomenal salesperson you are about how you can highlight the best features of the home and how you can you know, help people envision what their family living in this house would look like and all of the, the wonderful stories that realtors can tell and do tell. Um, you can show them that, right? You can't show them that if you say, trust me, I'm a great salesman. How, how do I know? I mean, you're right. selling me on being my agent, but that's different than selling a house, right? So I, I think there's a Absolutely. lot of benefits to this stuff. And I'm really glad that you guys um, have gotten you know, gotten your arms around it. And I know many MLSs have, which I, I'm very appreciative of, of on behalf of everyone. Now, one of the things that I say on the show all the time, Jim, so I'm, I'm going to put in my pitch for you guys too. So if, if you are from the New York market and you see that up on the top of the screen here, right next to the logo, you see this thing that says products and services. That's where you want to click because there's all kinds of cool stuff in there. I looked at it this morning. Mm -hmm. um, there's Cloud CMA and rate plug and oh I don't know there's well you I don't know 10 15 products something like that Jim that you guys oh, offer yeah. definitely definitely more than that and it's and, that. Okay. yep and not all of those were available in both of our market areas before we merged so now there's there's actually things that were not available to you to the agents all of them before so go in there and poke around exactly so this is just another example and again if you're not from one key, that's okay. You have something like this in yours. Either it says products or it's a dashboard or it's a bunch of links or it's a bunch of logo pictures of logos. It's something. But go and check this out because Jim is one of our best leaders in MLS, but he's got a lot of great friends and, and colleagues that do the same thing around the country. So take advantage of this stuff. It, it's like you're already paying for it anyway. Um, and boy, you get this stuff so much less expensively if you work through the MLS than you do anywhere else. So I'll put in my pitch for you guys. Thank okay. You. Um, yeah. So let's go to the next slide a little bit and let's talk a little bit more about, um, about communications because at this time things are so important, um, just cause things are literally, like you say, your market opened yesterday. They change on a day by day business or day to day by day basis. But also, um, there's just so many great ways to take advantage of, of MLSs and the, the services they offer. So tell us about what you guys are doing to, to help your members stay in tune. I'd love to. Um, the, where we were just before the help center, we had decided um, that what we need, and yes, I did steal it from my friends and colleagues, we did, we, we, everybody should have a central location where the, all of your subscribers can go to get the information they need. So what we have is a help center that was put together. And when we roll, when we were getting ready to go live, we had new rules we had to tell everybody about. We had new policies we had to tell people about. So we were keeping both systems. Stratus made a lot of changes. Thankfully, they did a fantastic job. They're still working through some of the issues as it is anticipated when you have a major conversion. But so we did webinars, we did videos of all of the changes. And, and I do truly believe it's due to the central location and the fantastic marketing communication plan we had. We, we actually had over 8,000 people watch our webinars and, awesome. and another uh, just over 2,500 who went to the video centers to watch. We had six different, you know, minute to two minute long videos that they could watch. And, you know, they took such great advantage of that, that, that it really helped them get to know what they needed to know. Mm -hmm. and, and then every time on our webinars where they would ask us questions, we went and compiled answers and posted those. So that we were posting the answers that were asked during the webinars because we wanted to make sure that we were communicating all of the information that they needed. So it was all in that one spot, continues to get great traffic to it. Um, awesome. and they're always, they're also, was a demand we we had always done a bi-weekly tech tip 
to send them out information regarding different products that are available to them, different tips they have. We've included RE technology, of course, in one of those tech tips when they've gone out. <laughs> and, and that is the absolute truth, of course. And we then began a bi-weekly newsletter that's just to the brokers. We had done a survey and they saw the need to that. And the last email that was sent to the brokers, we actually had a 40% open rate, which wow. is, which people go, really, not even half, but that is phenomenal. So so we're, we're trying to meet their needs through every communication way that we can and through different channels. Because these days, some people respond to emails, some respond to text messages, some respond to Facebook. So you just have to get those of your communication out through every channel that you can. And and you're gonna you're gonna touch most people if you get through all of the different channels that you have. Awesome. Now Barbara has an interesting question, and I've never heard this before, but I'd love your perspective, Jim. She said, if you do virtual open houses and buyers do not sign any type of disclosures, aren't we open to a fine? I don't think so, are you? No, no, because that's actually not considered substantive, first substantive contact. I do know of some people that were, were afterwards, if they could get the contact information, they would email them a disclosure form, but no, that's, you're okay on that one. You are, okay, and, good. And if, and if you'd like, if you're in New York, contact the NYSAR Legal Helpline and they'll walk you through any possibilities. Okay, good. Um, you know, and you you brought up something, and, and I, I hope that this continues. Um, you know, you talked about how you suspended fines and how you've gotten a little, uh, you, or you at least did at the time, got a little looser on allowing agents to do what they thought was the best way to market the property, even if they didn't right. have another brand. Do you envision MLS is continuing to soften up a little bit on some of those things now that we see that maybe it's it's okay or what, what's your perspective on that you know that's a that's a that's that's a bit of a tough question i do see it softening up but you know there's there's always another side to that as we know so if if you continue with branded tours those eventually get to the cooperating brokers customers and so there's definitely two sides to that. We're still having it go for the time being, but you know, you kind of have to weigh both sides on each and every one of those. There's, you know, there's things that the listing agent, of course, would like to do, but then there's the other point of view on that. So you, you have to weigh them each individually and, and see, uh, it, our, on this particular instance, not the tours, but on this particular instance, it, is it more punitive than than anything else? And if that's the case, you shouldn't do it. You know, it does right. get you to revisit everything as you're moving forward. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So um, we're we're heading up to the the our 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 ending time here, Jim. So I would love you to give us. Oh, I know. Wait, I forgot. I forgot the most important thing. Really goodie. I got to show you guys these goodies. Okay, talk about this website. This is oh, so our good. consumer oh, site. Well, yeah. on, on Long Island, uh, MLSLI, we, we always have had a strong presence for our consumer with a consumer portal. We were averaging about 23,000 sessions per day pre-pandemic. Um, <clears throat> we've, en we've engaged a consultant to work with focus groups to see where we needed to get better. Um, who was that consultant? Do you remember, Marilyn? I think she was really smart. She's from California. She owns RE Technology. <laughs> yeah, but we're not going to name names at this point. No, not going to name names. <laughs> so, so uh, as part of the new MLS, we've we've come up with a uh, had a new site designed. It's one key MLS. It is going live on Monday, June twenty second, and. Yeah. The goal, of course, is to, it's going to have all of our listings on, should be a tremendous lead generator, uh, like all MLS portals. It only has the listing agent, listing broker on it, nobody else. But, of course, the goal is to retain everybody we have and then grow from there. 
and the site is fantastic. And if you would like, you can show the beginning of a. Yeah, let me click on it. I, I, I did want to underline too that for those that are in the area, that it has Long Island and Manhattan and the Hudson Valley. Um, Manhattan listings, as if anybody works in that market, know how difficult it is to collect those. So right. I think it's awesome that you've done that. So let me give you, let's give it a shot. Let's see if this will work. I don't know if it will, but we'll try. Here we and, go. And, and for people in our area, this is a video that we'll be sending out to everybody so that you can all see it. Okay, so we'll just play like 30 seconds of it just to give you a, a taste. And we'll put the link for it down below so you guys can grab it if you want to. OneKeyMLS.com is the first consumer property search portal run by New York's largest multiple listing service with listings from Long Island, Manhattan, and Hudson Valley. We offer the largest selection of listings from realtors in New York with more than 40,000 listings for sale and rent represented by more than 42,000 realtors across the New York metropolitan area. On OneKeyMLS.com, listings are the star of the show. Every listing is synced to the MLS every five minutes. They're the most accurate and timely listings in New York. Our robust map-based property search tools and easy type ahead enables consumers to get right to specific communities, neighborhoods, or zip codes. Intuitive map-based search enables consumers to reposition and reveal up to the minute listings live. You can even draw a search radius to narrow your search results. Big high resolution photos show off every property's best features and in-depth property remarks highlight what's special in each listing. Every listing is augmented with extensive lifestyle, school, and demographic data, which is drawn from more than 100 public and private data sources. In Manhattan, OneKeyMLS.com offers comprehensive building profiles. You can also see what's for sale nearby and what has recently sold so you can get to know the neighborhood. OneKeyMLS.com only be Well, there's just a little uh, little sneak peek for you guys, but isn't it gorgeous? I'd love to hear anybody's feedback. I think it looks beautiful. It turned out great. We couldn't be happier with it. Yeah, it really is. Um, and again, for those that are not from New York, I'm sorry, because it's a beautiful website. And these guys have always done a great job of generating a ton of listening exposure and leads for their members. But don't forget, your MLS may have an MLS website like this. It may not be as brand new and gorgeous as this one, but I, I'm telling you, I just looked at one yesterday, for example, in, in Cleveland. Um, the amount of engagement, meaning the number of people that saved a lead, saved a listing, or that inquired for more information, or that shared a listing, is always really, really high on, on sites that come from MLSs. And the reason is that people, consumers know that that data is coming from you guys, right? They know it's the real deal. They know it's up to date. They know it's comprehensive. And they know that nobody's doing bait and switch by saying, oh, it's this person's listing when it's really somebody else's. None of that stuff happens, right? So again, don't forget about this. Take advantage of these things in listing presentations. Yeah. Talk about it. Cheryl says, fabulous, by the way. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, and um, let's see. Oh yeah, <laughs> Dennis says, oh yeah, New York ends at the Hudson. Like he's he's from uh, Rochester, Rochester, Syracuse, I think. So I, I'm with you on that. I was on the other end of the of the state for many years. But Dennis in Buffalo, no one ever believes that Buffalo is even part of New York, but that's okay. And, anyway. and, and I'll go on record as saying I like both of those places. Good job, Jim. Good job. <laughs> anyway, awesome stuff. Um, so so happy to see that you guys are continuing to innovate. Um, expanding the amount of it, listing exposure and, and um, you know, opportunities to sell properties at full full boat. Um, there was also a comment about how much you've made commercial a focus. So um, Howell appreciates how much you've made that a focus because that is of course a big part of the market as well. So great job all the way around. Just love and it. I, you guys and I awesome. appreciate everything Howell's done on that commercial end. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Good. I, I say you guys are friends. That's awesome. All right. So I wanted to let everybody know who's coming up tomorrow. We've got um, uh, Sheldon Raposa. He is from Market Leader, and he's going to talk a lot about how to lean into technology and data to market proof your business. So how can you always be out there? And I think a lot of you have learned this lesson during this time that, you know what, you don't have to stop promoting. You don't have to stop uh, making your brand well known, even in a, as weird a crisis as we just are going through. And then on Monday, we've got Agent Image coming in. 
Um, they're going to talk about again how to use technology to build your brand. So they're they're another great product that the, our uh, company that does some really neat things to help agents. Um, yeah, so that's what's coming up. And then just in about two hours, in fact, I've got three webinars today. If anybody is uh, like to go to the, the Realtor.com Facebook Lives, I'm going to be on that in just a few minutes with Andrew Dorn. So jump over there on the Realtor.com Pro site with me. And then at 11 today, we've got um, another HomeSnap Pro session. If, if any of you are on it with, um, uh, we just had one about, I don't know, a week. 10 days ago, showing us some of the really cool features of HomeSnap, because that's a great product. This one is a brand new thing nobody has seen yet. I really want you guys to check this one out. Um, this is a really interesting way to generate leads using Google and Facebook at a very, very affordable way um, with some really interesting breakthrough technology. So don't miss that one. That's at 11 o'clock today. Um, Michael, if you can throw in the, um, Oh, you did already. The link for HomeSnap Concierge. Grab that if you want to come and join us there. Or just if you want me to register, you just put your name in the and your email in and we'll get you registered because that's a, a really good one. I, I just saw it yesterday. I was like, wow, this is really cool stuff. So there's so much going on. One of the things that I love about what we're seeing right now is it seems like as hard and as challenging and as depressing and as all of this stuff has been, nobody has slowed down. If anything, it seems like innovation has sped up. People are doing things to help you guys in ways that, uh, like Greg Robertson, for example, said he was working on something for about a year. It was just one of the things they were working on. And as soon as this hit, they bumped it right to the top. And now you've got an opportunity to do digital listing presentations. So it's really good. I'm really proud of all of the tech companies that have stepped up. So thanks to everybody for doing that. Um, yeah. Question? Oh, I thought I heard this comment. If anybody would like us to sign you up for all of our upcoming coffee chats automatically, just drop in your email address into the questions or email me at marilyn at retechnology.com and we'll get you registered. And if you want to make sure that you never miss any of these guys, um, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at retechnology inc. Hit the subscribe button and then hit that little bell next to it until it gets solid. And then every time we publish something, you'll get a notification in your email about that. Um, now, if you're lucky enough to be from OneKey, you already have a, a, the opportunity for a free subscription from RE Technology. Um, that's a $200 value that OneKey provides to you guys. But if you're if you're not from that market and for whatever reason don't have an RE Technology subscription, um, you can go to retechnology.com, click in the top right hand side where it says create account, click on the monthly option, and then type in the codes be listed below there, and uh, we'll give you a three three month subscription in the meantime. So. Um, thanks again. And Jim, this was awesome. Thank you so much for coming today. I really appreciate Thank it. You, I appreciate it. I had a great time. Good. And so everybody remember, you've got a great MLS. If you're from OneKey, you definitely have a great one. If you're from other markets, they're, they're just as interested in helping you be successful. So go in, check out those products, take some of their training. By the way, I, we did want to mention too, I know you guys are doing a lot of online training. Many, many MLSs are doing more and more of that now. So even if you still don't want to go to the office or it's too far away or any of those things, um, you know, check it out. There's a lot of pre-recorded and live uh, opportunities for you to continue to learn. So with that, I thank you so much. Hopefully we'll see you guys at 11 today with our uh, HomeSnap Concierge yeah. product. Jim, thanks again. And everybody have a great day. Thank you so much. Be well, everybody.